Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight is Holy Thursday, a time when we remember our Lord's Last Supper and celebrate the sacrament. As we do this, we gather in the presence of a God who knows everything about our stories, everything we've been through, everything we've done, every scar that we have, every scar that we've left on others. We draw near to worship a God who knows everything about us. As you meditate upon our Lord's passion and come to receive His body and blood this evening, my prayer for you is that you experience the wonder of God knowing. And that this table is a place of forgiveness. You can see it in the account of the Last Supper that we just read. It's very clear that Jesus knew about Jesus. He knew what Judas had been paid to do. He knew that Judas was looking for an opportunity to betray him. But instead of a trap, Jesus sets a table. Instead of a confrontation, Jesus offers an invitation. Instead of treating Judas like an enemy. He dines with him like a brother. And as they sit together at the Passover table, Jesus makes it very clear that he is a God who knows everything about the ones who gather around his table. Matthew records Jesus saying, Truly I say to you, One of you will betray me. Did you notice how the disciples react to this knowledge? Matthew tells us that they are full of sorrow and questions. Who would do such a thing? Surely not I. It's Luke that, that tells us they even began to argue among themselves, trying to figure out who among them would be capable of doing such a thing. And you can imagine how helpful those words must have been as accusations started being hurled across the room. As the feast intended to celebrate God saving His people comes to an end, the disciples are involved in, in an argument about sin trying to figure out who it is, where it is. You know, we might know something about that. You know, most rumors in churches rise out of similar questions. Someone talks about an unnamed member who struggled with something or did something they shouldn't have done, and everyone wonders, hey, who who is it? Who did it? Or somebody says, you know, I'd like to pray for someone in our community who's, who's going through this issue, who's, who's having this problem, and questions and gossip begin. And soon the, the spiritual work of God is set aside and everyone is digging around in everyone else's closet looking for the certainty of sin that might be present there. I mean, just like the disciples, no longer looking to Jesus, but looking among themselves, In the shadow of wrongdoing, we become engrossed in seeking out the certainty of sin. But not Jesus. That's what's so amazing about His Last Supper. Jesus knows about the evil. He knows about the betrayal. He knows about the suffering that He's going to endure. And yet in the face of certain evil, Jesus does not try to keep Judas away from his disciples. He doesn't try to turn his disciples against Judas. And he doesn't run to another city in fear. In the face of certain evil, Jesus does the certain work of God. Yes, one will betray him. And another is going to deny him. And eventually, all will fall away. But in the midst of all that is wrong and weak and evil about human flesh, there remains one thing that is true. God is alive. 
His love is certain, and this night the kingdom of God is coming into the world. In the face of certain evil, Jesus offers certain forgiveness. Take, eat, this is my body. Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And tonight, Jesus calls his disciples to remember him. He is their freedom. In him is the new covenant. In him is eternal love. In him, sin, death, and the power of devil are destroyed. In his body, he will bear the punishment of our sins on the cross, and with his blood, he will claim us as his own so that the angel of death sheathes his sword. And this body and blood are eternal forgiveness, and as often as we eat this body and drink this cup, we proclaim his death until he comes, and the benefits that that has for all people. There at that first Last Supper, we see the gracious work of God among His disciples. And here tonight in the supper at this table, we see the gracious work of God even among us. Yes, we come tonight with scars, with the parts of our lives that we'd rather not remember. There are things that we have done that would make us say, Pastor, if you only knew. And for some of you, I do. For others, I don't. But for all of us, God knows. He sees and knows, and tonight we confess to Him the certainty of our sin. But tonight, God comes and proclaims the certainty of your salvation. In the death of His Son, He has forgiven your sin. In His body and blood, He comes tonight to assure you of the certainty of His love. Here, you are no longer known as a sinner. You are known and acknowledged as a child of God. And tonight, God prepares a place for you at His table, a place of forgiveness, a place for you to experience the wonder that happens When God knows all about you, He chooses to know you only through the gracious work of His Son, what Jesus has done for you. Now, it's hard to express the beauty of this wonder, but it was Matthias Grunwald who managed to do just that when he created what is known as the Isenheim altarpiece. You have a picture of it there in your bulletin, in the insert. It's a carved shrine with two painted doors that open and close over a main painting like a cabinet. There are two views for which this altarpiece is remembered, one on the outside when the doors are closed and the other from the inside as the doors are opened. Now, when the doors are closed, the altarpiece shows the crucifixion of our Lord And this view could be described as gruesome. Christ hanging on the cross, his body discolored by a greenish hue, his wounds are torn flesh covering an emaciated body. But when the doors are opened, there's a radically different view. Here is the painting of the resurrection. Christ bursts forth from the tomb in an explosion of color. His hands are raised in blessing. Behind him, in orange and startling yellow, a sun rises against a brilliantly blue sky. His body is wrapped in swirls of clothing, yellow, white, red, and blue garments. But most amazingly, Grunwald replaced rubies and the hands and feet and his side. The wounds of Jesus have been transformed. They are precious jewels that shine with the brilliance of the resurrection. And in this simple act, Grunwald has captured the wonder of this night. Christ's body will bear scars, scars that come from a punishment that that you and I will never know. 
And even after his resurrection, the scars stay with him. An unexpected treasure that proclaims his perfect love to the world. Tonight, we have a Savior who invites us with wounded hands to his table. With these wounds, he continually reminds us of a love that guard God will never forget. These scars are the marks of a God who truly knows his creatures, knows their suffering, he knows their sin, and knows the punishment of their death. But these scars are also the hands of a risen Savior. He carries these with him even after death. They proclaim his perfect love so that when you see your scars, when you wonder what would happen if others would only know what happened in your life, what you've done, that you may know this. God does know, but he knows you in love because of the death and resurrection of his son. And because he knows, Jesus invites you to his table this evening, a place of forgiveness. He comes to feed you, to forgive you, to cover your scars with his wounded hands and to cover you with the wonder of his love. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.